Hi everyone, Miss Ella here from Learn to Grow. Beautiful day here today in the Pacific Northwest. In fact, the rest of the week is going to be sunny. So I'm really happy about that. We have been getting a lot of rain and we needed some sun. So today I'm going to take you on a garden tour to show you what's growing and how things are coming along. So come join me in the garden and we'll take a walk. So we're going to start right at the front of the house, right behind this fence. I've got a strawberry patch. I actually had to clear out a lot of the strawberries. This was filled of strawberries. Um, this bed here, um, rock bed, is about, it looks like at least eight feet long and about four feet wide, and it's just overgrown with strawberries. So I had to thin them out. That way they can produce better for me this year. They are much bigger, more flowers. So some of these plants are pretty tall, about a foot tall, since I thinned them out. These are all Everberry, I believe. They will produce um, in spring, or late spring, and then again in the fall. All right, let's walk back here in the backyard. Start on this side here. Nothing yet on this patch. I'm going to be planting some potatoes. I am planting Yukon Gold and some, uh, some red potato varieties that should mature in time before fall. Got another strawberry bed here. So very crowded in there. I've been meaning to thin them out and plant some in the back backyard, which I have. I actually um, got some strawberries from the other strawberry plants. I took apart some of the uh, crowns of the strawberries and planted some in the backyard. So we'll get there. So again, lots of flowers. Here is one of our garlic beds. I planted some hardneck as well as soft neck garlic. Oh, and elephant garlic as well. And I actually just fertilized them about a week ago. So I'm fertilizing my garlic this year in the spring because I'm hoping to get bigger garlic heads. I normally would just plant them in the fall and add compost and some warm castings and I would just let them grow and I was just too lazy to fertilize them in the spring so this year I fertilize them and if you want to do that you want to get it done right away um, by the end of this week you want to fertilize them late spring um, between the second and the third week of May before the bulbs or the heads start to swell and also before they start to form the scapes or the flower stalk all right, let's move to the backyard. So here's more garlic in this bed. I've got some collard greens in here, as well as kale varieties. These were planted uh, last season, so these were starting to bold. I have been trimming off the flower stalks and using them for stir fries. So you want to harvest the flower stalks before the buds bloom, so that way they're tender. Another bed here of garlic planted with some lettuce and bok choy. Let's go over here, give you a better look of the rose. I try to plant garlic throughout the garden because it helps deter insect pests, such as aphids, cabbage moths, cabbage worms, which are the larvae of the cabbage moths, and also even tomato hornworm if you're planting tomatoes. I think it's working so far this year. Last year, I didn't plant any garlic or the um, season before, and all my bok choy, um, Oh gosh, um, kale, they were attacked by aphids and cabbage moths. So far, I don't have a problem yet. So crossing my fingers, these are bok choy plants here. I can now harvest the young leaves and or I can let them mature in about two to three weeks. And in this row here, I've got some loose leaf lettuce in between the two rows of garlic there. So let me zoom in. They look pretty healthy, and I've noticed that I haven't had any slug problem as well since I've been planting garlic throughout the garden. I think the garlic smell deters slugs as well. It's a pretty strong um, smell be um, because of the sulfur, and also since garlic contains sulfur, it acts as a fungicide, so it's a great companion plant to plant near your other plants. Okay, let's move on to the back here. All the herbs are looking great and lush. Look how bushy these are. This is oregano. These are great um, perennials to add to your herb garden. They're fairly easy to grow. It just needs a somewhat drier soil, sandy, well-drained soil, and a nice sunny spot. Uh, this one is lemon balm, beautiful foliage. It is from the mint family, so it needs well-drained and moist soil. It thrives in full sun or part shade. 
Another great herb to add to your garden. It helps deter mosquitoes. So we haven't had that much problems with mosquitoes the past three years. It does self-seed, so make sure to cut off those stalks before they self-seed. This one is English lavender. It thrives in well-drained, somewhat sandy soil, so it doesn't have to be that moist, but it grows best in full sun. I like to use the flowers to infuse honey or oil. It attracts bumblebees. I think it's because of its nectar-rich flowers. I've read that some of the purple or blue-violet flowers are nectar-rich, so a lot of the bees like it. Another lemon balm here, another oregano plant. Oh, by the way, oregano puts out these um, lavender flowers and the bees love it as well. It attracts a lot of honeybees as well as um, wasp, which is a beneficial insect. Another lavender there. Oh, these are a couple of scarlet kale plants that I planted in pots to give away to one of my best friends. This is my rosemary. It's kind of leaning over, but it's starting to flower as well. It smells so good. You know, I've read that rosemary increases brain function and memory. So you can cut a sprig, put it in water so you can keep it in your kitchen, um, smell it every morning. <laughs> but I guess there's been some study that's proven that it increases memory and even helps some um, kids do better in their test scores. So interesting. This one is sage. It's, it's about to bloom. The flower buds look red, but when they bloom, they are violet and it attracts a lot of bees as well. By the way, you can plant sage, rosemary, oregano, and even lavender near your brassica plants. It will help deter aphids and cabbage moths because of their um, strong aroma. Okay, let's head this way. I've got some strawberries right here in the, near the walkway. These are the ones that I propagated from the crowns, from the other plants, um, towards the front of the house. On this side, I've got some bok choy planted next to marigolds. These are my thinnings from the other garden box. I didn't want to just discard them, so I planted them here instead. So I think they're doing okay, and I planted the marigolds near them because it's supposed to deter cabbage moths and aphids, so hopefully that works. I'm not sure if it's working though with slugs. Looks like this got attacked by slugs. And I've read that slugs like marigolds too, so I don't think it works with deterring slugs. On this bed here, I've got some more garlic. And in between, I believe I sowed some, let's see. They're not really growing because the squirrels keep digging up our seeds. These are volunteers here. These are cilantro. Oh, here we go. There's a few baby spinach popping along there. So yeah, I've got a lot of issues with squirrels um, digging up the garden. So every time I sow seeds, they come out here. They see me um, sowing seeds, so they dig them up. So I have to keep sowing seeds over and over again. On this garden box, or next to it, I've got some more garlic. And here's my collard greens that I planted almost three years ago. So I have been just trimming off these flower stalks as they pop up. That way, it can focus more on foliage growth and hopefully it lives another season so i usually take them off um, oops this is stuck and so far so good the leaves are growing big again so it's looking more like a miniature collard tree it's pretty neat on this box i've got some romaine lettuce and then next row i've got some radish more lettuce and then spinach over there let me zoom in they're still pretty young more garlic. I also incorporated some marigold in there. These are the kale and collard plants from last season that's been going to, uh, trying to bolt or flower, but again, I've been just cutting off the flowers to keep it from bolting in hopes that it'll survive another season. I'm now in the back side of the garden. I'm trying to get all this in the video. So here are some scarlet kale that we're growing. Still pretty young. I'm going to be transplanting these later on throughout the garden. These are a lot of these are scarlet kale. This is an ornamental kale. Looks like it's kind of starting to get wilted. I might have to water them this week because we're getting a lot of sun. Look how beautiful this foliage are, those purple veins. And when it's cold, the leaves turn even more purple, like the ones on the bottom there. And we've got some curly kale, a couple of them here. 
So looking great so far. There's another ornamental kale. And some of these are kale from last season, Russian kale. There's one that's bolting, a couple more Russian kale, more garlic. These are laxinato kale or dinosaur kale. I've got three of them here. On this row, I've got some collard greens. There's three right there. And again, I planted some marigolds along the side or the row of the kale and collard greens to deter cabbage moths and aphids. Then in the middle here, I've got some radishes. And on this row are some chards that I'm trying out for the first time. I believe these are rainbow chards. So looking much better since we've gotten some sun. They are beautiful too. And on this patch here, I plan on planting some beans. So I'm currently working on this garden bed. This is the one I, that I did a soil test on, which is lacking some nutrients. So, so I'll be adding some compost into this um, garden bed here. So here's a look from afar on the back side of our, of our garden. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you guys enjoy this garden tour and that you're finding the tips helpful as well. Let me know what you're growing and how things are coming along your way. Thank you so much for joining me today. And also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And by the way, we are on Instagram, so I'll provide the links below. And also, we have a Facebook group, so uh, check out our Facebook group. The links are all below this video. Thank you so much for joining me today, and happy gardening!